thousand rounds in 27 minutes. Why the M2 Browning was such a beat. When one thinks back to the weapons of mass destruction that emerged in the 20th century, usually the atomic bomb or poison gas comes to mind. But when you tally up the deaths from the world's wars over the past hundred years, the simple fact is that atomic and chemical weapons created only a handful of casualties compared to more conventional means, such as disease or artillery. Discount these, however, when you take a hard look at mass casualty generation in the 20th century. Today, the machine guns of the early 20th century still have a role, though very few look like they did a hundred years ago. Improved materials, lighter designs, better ammunition, and other factors mean that most machine guns look like something from the distant future, not the era of the Model T. Note the word most. There is, in fact, one machine gun that's been in continuous production and service for almost a hundred years and is still as respected and feared as it was when it first was introduced. It arose from the fertile mind of an American designer who became the most respected gunsmith of his age, John M. Browning. His weapon was the M250 caliber heavy-barreled machine gun. What made the M2 such an impressive weapon was the bullets it fired. From the very beginning, the 50 caliber rounds designed for the M2 were something special. The term caliber in the context of small arms means the diameter of the bore, measured in decimal fractions of an inch. So in metric terms, the M2 is designated as a 12.7 millimeter weapon. Initially, the specifications of the M2 ball round were for a simple solid shot, little different and almost aerodynamically perfect. Ball does not mean spherical, but solid. That is, not having a cavity into which chemicals are placed for tracer or explosive use. The form of the 50 caliber round has a slight taper at the bottom, which has the effect of reducing drag and maintaining stability. Ma Deus first entered service with the U.S. Army in 1919, too late for service in World War I. Nevertheless, the M2 became an instant hit wherever it was installed or deployed for both its amazing hitting power and range and its genuine simplicity of operation. Much of this derived from the simple recoil operation of the weapon, a signature John Browning design feature. Recoil operated means that it uses an ingenious arrangement of levers, cams, and springs to capture part of the powerful recoil energy of the fired cartridge, uses it to extract and eject the spent cartridge case, then to feed the next round, load, and fire it. This cycle repeats as long as the gunner holds down the V-shaped trigger located between the two hand grips at the rear of the gun. Release the trigger and latch secures the mechanism in the open bolt position, ready to fire again. In fact, when firing the M2 on full automatic, there are also single shot and semi-automatic modes, the sensation to the gunner is a lot like riding a classic Harley-Davidson hog motorcycle. The power is something you feel as much as hear and see. Nevertheless, the M2 is not always an easy weapon to possess and maintain. While rugged and well-built, it requires a fair amount of maintenance and cleaning, especially in the adjustment of the headspace between the rear of the cartridge and the bolt. In addition, the weight and fairly high recoil of the M2 require a sturdy and stiff mount for effective shooting, mandating either the previously mentioned heavy tripod or a secure pintel mount tied to the structure of a ship, aircraft, or vehicle. The payoff, though, is a weapon that can hit targets with ease over a mile away with an accuracy that is often surprising. During the Vietnam War, the legendary Marine sniper Sergeant Carlos Hathcock obtained many of his 93 kills at ranges up to 2,500 yards with standard M2 machine guns and a special telescopic sight he carried in his gear. So effective was the combination that, 20 years later, a Tennessee gun designer named Ronnie Barrett would design a lightweight 50 caliber sniper rifle firing the M2 ball round that would become a standard weapon for the U.S. Army, Navy, and Marine Corps. By the start of World War II, the M2 was the standard weapon for U.S. fighters and bomber aircraft, tanks, and scout cars, and the primary anti-aircraft weapon for naval vessels. As might be imagined, though, the needs of a two-ocean war made for a voracious demand for the M2, which only grew as the conflict went on. 
For example, B-17 and B-24 heavy bombers each had a dozen M-2s as their defensive armament, while six of the 50 caliber weapons became standard for the F-6F Hellcat, F-4U Corsair, and P-51 Mustang fighters. Millions of the 50 caliber weapons were produced and used in every theater of the war. By the end of the conflict, the M2 had become the most produced machine gun of all time, with millions in service around the world. Even more impressive were the myriad rounds produced for the M2, numbering into the billions. By the start of World War II, the basic M2 ball round, later improved into the M33 configuration, had grown into an entire family of ammunition. A normal mix of rounds for most applications would include two rounds of TP ball, two of API, and one of tracer in five round groups, providing a good range of end effects. The ammunition is assembled into belts with reusable spring clips called disintegrating links because they're stripped off by the gun's feeder mechanism. Using the ammunition shown in the sidebar, the theoretical maximum range for the M2 is 4.2 miles and has actually been used for indirect fire at high angles of elevation to create a fire beaten zone on the far side of a hill. The practical maximum range for aimed direct fire is about one mile. At shorter ranges, the effects are truly amazing. With a rate of fire between 400 and 550 rounds a minute, 50 caliber rounds from the M2 can literally shred drywall or wooden buildings or even unarmored vehicles. At favorable angles and ranges, it can penetrate the top, side, or rear plating of armored vehicles and aircraft like personnel carriers, infantry fighting vehicles, or attack slash scout helicopters. This makes the M2 a very dangerous thing to have in your bag of military tricks and is why the 50 caliber as the M2 enters its ninth decade of continuous service and production, one might think that it's ready for a well-deserved retirement and replacement. However, that assumption is wrong. The basic virtues of the M2 still make it the choice of military professionals all over the world more than 80 years after its introduction to service. The threat of naval terrorism has meant that every U.S. naval vessel now has pintail mounts for a pair of M2s. The guns are still found in heavy weapons units of every Army and Marine Corps formation and service. Long after some guided missiles and nuclear weapons have gone to the boneyard, Madus continues to soldier on into a new century, made relevant again by a new era of conventional warfare. Although the gun never wears out, the United States continues to maintain the tooling and industrial base to produce it. New production M2s are still being delivered today, the current contractor for the U.S. military being Sacco Defense. Its unit cost is $14,400, cost-effective considering its range, lethality, durability, and simplicity. As the M2 soldiers on, the fact that the last M2 gunner has probably not been born yet this is an almost ageless weapon whose utility has gone through more wars, engagements, and incidents than historians could probably tally. Nevertheless, Ma Deuce is still out there with the kind of reputation and affection usually associated with a new sports car or bass boat by the gunners who man them. It's fitting that she will probably outlive them too. Peace.